Dear learner, I, Professor Shachisha from School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, IGNU, welcome you all in today's session on Introduction to Environmental Management. In this session, we will be discussing the basic concepts of environmental management, various principles of environmental management. These principles are mainly based on precautionary principle, uncertainty principle, polluters pay principles and also protection and promotion of health and safety. In this session, we will also discuss in brief about our global common environmental problems and how we can use and implement different approaches and principles to solve various environmental problems. To begin with, uh, environmental management, if you see, it is made up of two words, two terms. One is environment and the other one is management. In simple terms, if we define environment, it can be defined as a sum total of all the external influences to which an organism is exposed to. Uh, in simple term, environment, it includes water, air, land and the interrelationship which exists among all the component of environment and human beings. Other living creatures, plant, microorganism, property, they all interact and there is a relationship exist. The second term which is management, management can be defined as to control and in this sense environmental management is the art or science of control or we can say that art and science of controlling our surrounding for goods can be referred as environmental management which is popularly known as EM. As I was telling you and you have also read in other sessions also that our environment mainly comprise of four components atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere and biosphere. We all know that aerial component atmosphere, water component hydrosphere, soil component lithosphere and all the living organism lives in biosphere. They are changing now. The reason is basically the increasing population because of that various kind of pollution whether it is water pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, soil pollution, radioactive pollution, urban pollution or any other form of pollution. Industrialization and unsustainable use of natural resources, it is also causing harm to our environment, various component of environment. We know that population exposure, it leads to more urbanization, then migration, then it is a vicious cycle of exploitation of natural resources and more pollution, etc. All the industries, whether it is um, iron industry or whether it is textile industry, paint industry or any other industry in that matter, release various effluent into different environmental components and they cause various type of pollution. In the same way, the forest land is converting into agriculture land. Then there is deforestation, soil erosion, desertification and again it is causing the impact into our environment. So what I wanted to say here is different human activities and our changing lifestyle, they are ultimately leading to the various environmental emergency or catastrophic. One of them is global climate change or you can say greenhouse gases, air pollution, water pollution, etc. To control and to find solution to all these problems and effective environmental management practices are required. So this session will begin with environmental management, why it is important to understand environmental management in this backdrop and the various approaches, principles which are related to environmental problem. So if we define the environmental management in simple term, we can define it as an approach to finding practical ways for saving water, energy, material and reducing negative environmental impacts. So environmental management in this term, it helps to investigate and manage the environment within the context of human influences, whatever the influence on air, water, soil or biosphere. It also incorporate examination of economics, culture, political structure, social equity, natural processes and various type of system. So in simpler term, if I say environmental management is a process in which different organization apply mechanism to develop and implement a set of cost effective priorities or actions. What are the basis of these actions? 
these actions are basically uh, they are based on well articulated societal preferences and goals to give you an example it is possible or it may be for the improvement of ambient environmental quality ambient air quality ambient water quality it may be for the provision of environmentally derived or related services various type of ecosystem services or for the conservation of natural resources or for the management of biodiversity maintenance and enhancement of natural resource and ecosystem so all these actions include the management or protection of environment and its component if, if, from this definition we can also say that the scope of environmental management is mainly on environmental protection and also on natural resource management it also includes other fields like planning policy making project implementation industries business and other related activities so environmental management we can say it involves the management of both abiotic and abiotic and abiotic component of environment as we till now we know that the environment is made of biotic component which are living component and abiotic component which are non living component so uh, when we talk about environmental management it involves the management of both biotic as well as abiotic component of environment so the environmental management we can say it is a purposeful activity and the goal is to maintain and improve the state of an environmental resource and the environmental resource which is affected by human activity so it is can also be defined there are various terminology various definitions given by various scientists and various worker so it can be defined in several way it can also be defined the management of the interaction and impact of human activities on natural environment so what are the main aim of environmental management besides protection of environment and natural resource management conservation etc the environmental management also ensure that ecosystem services and biodiversity are protected they are maintained for equitable use for human generation and also it helps in maintaining ecosystem integrity it also take into consideration the various ethical economical social ecological variable it in a way it tries to identify the factor that have a stake in the conflict and it uh, the conflict which may rise between meeting the needs but protecting the environment which is also known as sustainable development so talking about the goals of environmental management for there are many goals uh, let it be any industrial setting whether it is a project or whether major activity these all goals of environmental management they focus into certain aspects the major focus we can uh, say that number 1 is to reduce the quantity of pollutant that is released into the environment the second we can say that increase the use of environmentally acceptable or environmentally friendly material in the process it use better or advanced equipment better technology in place of polluting technology or old technology which are causing harm to environment it also aims for re recycle reuse reduce and uh, reuse the product and other by product so in that way it aims to minimize the impact of all over all over activities human activities on the surrounding so basically environmental management it encourages it uh, create awareness amongst various worker various user various uh, nearby community population group or individual if we talk about the approaches to environmental management there are number of environmental management approaches in the market basically most of them were developed especially by northern europe and japan if you see in practice almost all the environmental management approaches in some way or the other constitute an alternative to iso 14001 and the european commission eco management and audit scheme that is known as emas european commission eco management and audit scheme 
almost all the environmental management approaches they reduces the required work for the documentation compared to EMAS or ISO 14001. If we see the core element, the core element of most of the environmental management approaches, they are based on the evaluation of the direct environmental effect, number one, the implementation of environmental measures and third is the requirement of legal compliances. If you see worldwide, uh, the worldwide eco map mapping, eco profit, PRUMA, PRUMA, that is known as profitable environmental management. They are some of the environmental management approaches in circulation. However, in addition to that, there are many other EM approaches in different countries. For example, uh, ECON scheme, B8555. Green Dragon Environmental Standard, these are in United Kingdom. Likewise, PIUS and Environmental Certification for the Skill Trade in Germany. Then Eco Action 21, Eco Stage in Japan, Eco Lighthouse in Norway, EcoScon and E Plus in Spain, Green Network, Growing Responsibility in Denmark. So there are various type of environmental management approaches in different countries which are known by different names. When we talk about the participation or role of community, individual, groups or organization in environmental management, the participation is very important. What is participation? Participation is defined as a process where com either community, individual, groups, or organism, uh, organization, they decide to take an active role in making decisions that affect them. So when we talk about community participation, which is most popular, it means that readiness on the part of both local government and the citizen to admit equal responsibility and activities in managing their equa uh, environment. So community local government and citizen, they both are engaged or involved in the management of environment. So when we talk about community participation, it means that people, they are participating in planning, in implementation of any project and ma also managing in their local environment. The community as a whole, citizen as a whole, they participate in environmental management and their job is to ensure success of various joint activity. It also involves pooling of different type of resources, pooling of different type of skills and also to develop strategies from within the community. So community participation in one way or other, it ensures that the checking and curative action through monitoring and evaluation can be done by the community and for the community itself. So there are number of steps when we talk about community participation in environmental management that may include brainstorming discussion, they may be problem behind problem approach, solution for solution approach and there are different type of traditional approach, age old tradition and experiences of these community or indigenous people or traditional knowledge of in this uh, indigenous people or community that also help in improving the environmental efficiency of resources and management. In this context, I would like to discuss the National Environmental Council of India. The National Environmental Council of India, it has five representatives from NGOs as well as the National Consumer Federation. In this regard, the country promotes people participatory institution like uh, Panchayati Raj institution, cooperative, self-help groups in different environmental programs. If we talk about India's eco-development program, it involves local community in the maintenance of designed buffer region surrounding protected area. Uh, we have also heard about the eco clubs. These eco clubs operate at school level and in India especially they are doing good work in plantation, whether it is uh, cleanliness uh, drives, whether it is energy saving drives, etc. The other example which I would like to give you is to uh, tackle the problem of uh, garbage by the community 
in if you um, this this uh, case is about the Bangalore city of, of India the center for environmental education southern region cell they have uh, conducted a hands on education program to create awareness among the urban people about the need to reduce wastage of water fuel and other natural resources the volunteers from different community they were trained on recycling composting health issues anti littering etc so this effort is basically to create awareness and par community participation in waste reduction and litter cleanup likewise there are many example where community were involved in all the environmental management activities in this regard ngo have also proved as a very important pillars to protect the environmental environment and running the environmental campaign in many part of the india uh, i would like to give a well known success story of the women's participation in environmental protection that is we know it uh, chipko movement in uttaranchal state of india in this movement grassroot uh, especially ladies they opposed to the destruction of india's forest and the women were hugged a women hugged and protected the trees through the gandhian method of non violence that is that's why it is known as chipko movement and beside the chipko movement there are apiko movement the we all know the bishnoi devi movement so in 1970s and 1980s the movement achieved a 15 year ban on green felling in the himalayas forest of uttaranchal and it created pressure for a natural resource policy so when there is community participation when there is participation of uh, uh, ngos which uh, or participation of individual or awareness campaign these environmental management uh, cases become a success story here it is not um, it is um, important to mention the historical perspective also of environmental management the environmental management concept as we are talking today is not a new one and if you see its roots were traced when environmental problem began in different parts of the world especially after industrial revolution if you see different environmental tragedies whether it is london smog of 1952 or fire accident in chuhago river in northeast ohio in the united state in 1967 69 all these uh, have resulted or initiated the environmental movement in different countries environmental pollution in united state has enacted the act that is united uh, states national environmental policy act us nepa in 1970 it has initially triggered the development and implementation of formal and informal environmental evaluation procedure in both developed and developing countries after that there are several conferences the, uh, among them the united nation conference on human environment during 1972 which was held at stockholm stockholm in sweden was also a major step towards the development and use of environmental management if we talk about india in india the tiwari committee recommendation it results in the setting of a separate union department of environment in 1980 and this uh, was established to act as a nodal agency for environmental protection eco development work and to carry out various environmental appraisal for developmental project again if we talk about indian constitution article 48a and 51a g in the indian constitution have specific provision for environmental protection at present if you see there are uh, almost uh, about 200 indian laws that is related to environmental protection on various environmental issues whether it is air issues water forest biodiversity climate change fly ash hazardous waste solid waste municipal waste e waste noise waste etc so in that way in india the various laws are there to for enforcing the environmental protection india has an extensive environmental management system with a comprehensive set of environmental laws there are specific statutory mandates there are specific regulatory instruments 
institutional framework to implement and enforce environmental policy objective. To, this was a brief introduction of environmental management. Now I will discuss the main guiding principle of environmental management. Basically, these are based on precautionary, uncertainty, polluters pay principle, protection and promotion of health, safety, etc. To begin with, the first one I will discuss is precautionary principle. As the name indicates, this is an effective principle for dealing with risk and uncertainty in environmental management. If you see in fundamental, the principle requires action to prevent serious and irreversible damage even before harm can be scientifically demonstrated or economically assessed. So precautions, that's why the name is precaution. So in order to protect the environment, a concept which include people's way of life and the integrity of their community, the precautionary approach shall be applied. If we see the precautionary principle, it was first adopted by the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, which is also known as Earth Summit, which was held in 1992. And the principle basically, it uh, means that during the threat of serious or irreversible damage to the environment, lack of scientific certainty should not be used as the environment as to postpone cost cost effective measure to prevent environmental degradation. The th second is uncertainty principle. So according to uncertainty principle uh, of environmental management, it must be recognized that our knowledge of social world and of societal processes is imperfect. What it want to say is that the so society and social knowledge, it can never be fully perfect because the environment and the various processes they affect uh, they constantly change their affect constantly change and they vary from place to place and over time the third one is intra generation equity so in this principle to ensure equitable and secure access to environmental resources and quality for all sections of society basically which also include women and children and also particularly poor community they are dependent on environmental resource for their livelihoods the fourth one is intergenerational equity so this intergenerational equity is the central principle in the definition of sustainable development and it is also the basis of the environmental accounting measures of sustainable income we all know about the Brutland Report 1987 in which sustainability means meeting need of present generation without compromising the need of future generation. This report is also known as our common future. It was published in 1987 and it was the outcome of the World Commission of Environment and Development which is also known as popularly WCED. So this principle basically aims that development activity or planned intervention should be managed so that the needs of the present generation are met without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own need. So these principle or this principle generally it is uh, in consonance with trilogy of economic, environment and social objective which are underlying principle of sustainable development. The next most important principle is polluter pay principle that is PPP. The, if you see the Greek, philosoph Greek philosopher Plato, he quotes and I unquote, if anyone intentionally spoil the water of another, let him not only pay damage but purify the stream or cistern which contain the water. It was in 1953, it was a dialogue of Plato. In principle, the polluter pay principle uh, depend on this strategy or its philosophy only. In this principle, the polluter should tolerate the cost of pollution with due regard to the public interest and without distorting international trade and investment. The polluter pay principle was first widely discussed in the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, which was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in June 1992, and was later endorsed by all the uh, attending representatives of the country. In this principle, 
it uh, it says that if the polluter have uh, polluter have to pay for the cost of any pollution they cause market forces will then encourage polluter to change their activity either by introducing new pollution control technology or by switching to more efficient production process the um, to give you a very good example you all have uh, might have heard about the exxon voltage case this is the best example of polluter prey principle when in 1989 an oil tanker which was owned by exxon it spilled over um, 3 million barrels of crude oil into sea and it caused significant environmental hazard exxon was forced to pay dollar 125 million to the federal government and the state of Alaska and dollar 900 million into the fund for environmental projects controlled by the government, scientific research and habitat protection. So this is the polluter pay principle. Then there is user play principle, UPP. It is also known as resource pricing principle according to which the beneficiary should pay for the full cost of using the resources and its relative services. When we talk about the full cost, the full cost include the cost of loss for the future generation also. So both PPP and UPP, they are believed as equitable and both offer the prospect of achieving efficiency. The next principle is the principle of subsidiarity. This principle generally aims to ensure a degree of independence for a lower authority in relation to higher body or for a local authority in relation to central government. So it is it involves by sharing of powers between several levels of authority, a principle which forms the institutional basis for federal states. Then recognizing and preservation of diversity. The, we all know that the community and society are heterogeneous. They are demographically configured whether they, depending upon age or gender. They comprise different groups, different uh, diverse value system, different skill sets. So special attention is required to appreciate the existence of social diversity between the community and this principle recognize this unique requirement of the special group. Then internalization of cost. So in this principle, the full social and ecological cost of a planned intervention should be internalized through the use of economic and other instrument or model. Then the next principle is prevention principle. This principle allow action to be taken to protect the environment at an early stage. It is generally preferable and economical in the long run to prevent ecological damage and also the negative social impact occurring from uh, various type of activity. The next principle is protection and promotion of health and safety. As the name indicate and we also know that health and safety of individual or community are very important. So all planned intervention should be assessed, assessed for the health impact and accident risk especially in terms of assessing and managing the risk from hazardous substance, various type of technologies, various type of processes so that their harmful effect can be minimized. So this uh, impact or if and we talk about the health impact, the health impact it include all the physical, mental, social well-being and safety of all people and paying particular attention to more vulnerable more likely harm group, more economically deprived group, indigenous group, children's, women's, poor's, elderly, disabled and the population which is most exposed to risk, uh, they require more attention. Then there is principle of multi-sectoral integration. So multi-sectoral coordination, it refers to the deliberate association among various stakeholders, whereas it is private sector, civil society, governmental governments or various other sector, whether it is environment, health, economy, they jointly achieve a policy outcome. So by engaging various sectors, multiple sectors, 
partners can leverage knowledge expertise reach and resources and thereby they uh, it uh, the benefits from they get benefit from their combined and varied strength as they work towards the common goal of environmental conservation and attaining sustainable development the last one principle i will discuss is protection of the global common so uh, what is global common global common are those important environmental problems which place uh, all countries at risk if no joint action is taken by them there are many such issues for example we know ozone layer depletion air pollution global warming desertification persistent organic pollution and the fate of antarctica environmental health of high seas and seabeds all these are the um, areas or environmental problem where all countries may be at risk if no joint action is taken to discuss few global environmental problem i will start with marine environment marine environment as we know it includes ocean seas bays estuaries and other major water bodies they cover around 70% of the earth surface they provide us food oil minerals recreation and contribute to water cycle they also act as highways for the international trade and regulates the world climate so there is a global threat in marine environment whether it is through overfishing whether it is through elevated temperature plastic debris pollution waste dumping into ocean ocean acidification destruction of habitat these are the threat to marine environment the there is uh, because of this uh, the degradation and loss of habitat is major concerns as uh, the there is loss of mangroves coral reefs etc the other in this i would like to discuss about the antarctic treaty the antarctic treaty was signed on 1st december 1959 in washington usa by 12 countries whose scientists have been active in and around antarctica during the international geophysical year of 1957 to 58 then there is a global common is ozone layer ozone layer is important constituent of stratospheric layer of atmosphere it act as protecting shield for living organism on earth from biologically active ultraviolet radiation so ozone with the oxygen air filter out of all uh, ultraviolet radiation and uh, however ozone can only absorb a fraction that is 70 to 90% of the sun and remaining 10 to 30% penetrate to the earth's surface Uh, we know about uh, the threats to ozone layer there are sulfate aerosol which emit through volcanic eruption chimneys of several industries uh, uh, they uh, transform or they catalyze the transformation of ozone to oxygen and thereby depleting it concentration we the there are several uh, the first warning if we talk about the ozone layer depletion it came in september 1985 when uh, explorer witnessed for the first time ever a dangerous drop in ozone concentration in the atmosphere over antarctica so um, atmospheric uh, the united nation general assembly uh, in uh, the year 1995 designated september 16 as the international ozone day for the preservation of ozone layer which is dedicated for creating global awareness about the dangers caused by the depletion of ozone layer likewise there is montreal protocol came into existence the montreal protocol regulate the production and use of chemical that contribute to the depletion of earth ozone layer it is an international treaty it was adopted in september 16 1987 at a conference in montreal Mo- montreal in quebec in canada and the treaty was signed by 197 country according to this their uh, the montreal protocol it uh, it stopped the emission of ozone depleting substance uh they it their ozone depleting substance are reducing and the ozone layer is expected to be fully healed near the middle of the 20th century then there is atmospheric pollution there are various type of air pollution that are threat to uh, atmosphere or air whether it is from industry burning of fossil fuel burning forest agriculture burning of waste crop residue etc and they are causing uh the result they are causing various type of uh, pollutant producing pollutant the secondary pollutant along with the primary pollutant they uh, they 
triggered the photochemical reaction in the atmosphere and caused photochemical smoke, acid rain, ozone layer depletion. The last uh, global threat which I would like to discuss in brief is the climate change. Uh, as we know that climate change refers to a long term change in the earth climate and uh, climate change means a change of climate which is attributed directly or indirectly to human activities. So, uh, we know that uh, the greenhouse gas emission, dust and aerosol, desertification, de de deforestation, ozone hole, all these are anthropogenic causes for global climate alteration. It is resulting in sea level, rise in sea level, ocean acidification, melting of ice sheets, glaciers, mass extinction of species, spread of disease, extreme weather event and changing in agricultural productivity. So, in this regard, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC was created in 1988. It is the international body which was set up by World Meteorological Organization and United Nations Environmental Programme to prepare uh, the assessment on all aspects of climate change and its impact. There are several treaties regarding climate change. I will not discuss in detail. But uh, the main treaties related to climate change are Kyoto Protocol in Kyoto, Japan on 11 December 1997, then Copenhagen Accord in Copenhagen, Denmark in 2009, the Cancun Agreement on December 11, 2010 in Cancun, Mexico, the Doha Amendment to the Kyoto Protocol in Doha, Qatar on 8 December 2012, Paris Agreement on 12 December 2015 and recently uh, in uh, October, November uh, 2021, we have seen the Conference of Party 26. So, to conclude this session, in this session we have discussed the environmental management or, and our global environmental, global common environmental problems. Uh, the, basically, this session we have dealt with the uh, definition and scope of environmental management, various principles of environmental management, how to solve various environmental problems with the help of this uh, environmental um, environmental uh, management approach and also we have discussed few global common problems which are affecting our environment. Thank you.